Excited to have Dr. Dan join us in the studio right now. We have Dr. Dan from Sioux Falls Hypnosis join us on Tuesdays. And when we're talking on Tuesdays, we have roughly five minutes. And we don't have a ton of time to say everything that we want to say. But we were just chatting and, and kind of talking about uh, confidence. That's one uh, of the programs that, yeah. that uh, radio program that we're doing. Boy, we really got carried away there. We, it, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, after we were done doing that, we we're like, you know, we should talk about this maybe a little more in depth. But but one of the things that we had talked about is I, I do stand up comedy, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of confidence that's involved yeah. in getting on stage. And it's not just comedy, but people who are in a band. If you're going to mm-hmm. get up in front of people and well, play, a, it's a music. metaphor for anything. Yeah, you know, getting a, doing stand up comedy and learning to be a good stand up comedian is the same thing as learning to be a good manager. Yeah. Learning to be a good anything that has to do with people. So yeah, we're we're talking about the same thing no matter what we're talking about. And, and I used to work with a gentleman who he said uh, when he was working at a, a big company. He knew when somebody was going to get promoted or fired. And I was like, what do, what do you mean? And he said, well, I even told the manager, he said, I, I see your tell. He said, I'm a poker player and I see, I see your tell. And uh, he's like, what tell? He said, I can always tell when somebody's either going to get promoted or fired. And one of the things that he would do is he would ask somebody in that company to do things that were not their job. Mm. And then if they did that and they didn't complain about that, Quite often, they were promoted. And if they complained the entire time, they weren't really with the team a whole lot longer. And that guy said, I like to put them on the stage and see if they can sing. Hmm. And I remember thinking, what a cool way to say that. There's it, a wisdom in it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, but, but part of that is confidence mm-hmm. as, as well. If, you know, if, you're gonna, if, if you're saying, I'm too good to do this lowly thing that I don't want to do. Or, or are they willing to take the risk? Yeah. Are they willing to risk being wrong? Are they willing to risk not knowing exactly what they're doing and then have yeah. to make it up as they go, yeah. which is really what we're talking about when we're talking about confidence. Absolutely. Is that whatever there is risk in whatever you're doing. Can you take that in and know you're going to get to be okay? If you succeed, you get to be okay. And if, if it doesn't go as well, you get to be okay. Yeah. You get to learn from it and become better and move on. And we had talked about that a little bit because we were talking about stand up comedy. Yeah. This idea that, um, you know, in order to be a great comedian, you got to be willing to bomb. Yeah. You got to be willing to suck, because <laughs> that's where your learning comes in. Yeah, we talk open. That's what people do at open mics. They're out trying new things, yeah. and a lot of times it just dies a horrible death it, right there in the room. And I, I love going to open mics. Yeah. My wife hates going to open mics. She's like, it's so awkward. <laughs> yeah, but I said, here's, and I don't know, maybe I'm weird. But there's something about that awkwardness that I like because for me, I love to watch the evolution of a joke mm-hmm. where somebody will yeah. get up and they'll tell this joke and it just, eh, you know, like nobody really laughed a whole bunch. And then the next week they're back and they're telling that same joke. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? Why would you do this? But it's a little different yeah. this time. And now people are, oh, hey, that's kind of funny. And then the third week they're telling the same joke, but it's even a little bit better. And I get to watch the evolution of this thing, this concept that was kind of half baked the first week, and then it's a little more baked, and now right. it's fully baked and frosted, and it's got candles on top, and it's part of their set. But what that person was able to do is they were able to fail. Yeah, they were, they were able to watch it just, just keel over and, oh, yeah. and croak in the middle of the room, and they and they took a deep breath and they took in what they were supposed to learn yeah. from that, and they know they knew they were worthwhile, and they stayed focused on what they wanted, and they yeah. very easily went in and did it again, and it got a little bit better. And for those of you who are out there listening in Radio Land, what John has just given you is is the metaphor for how to succeed at life. Oh wow, nice! Is the, I didn't even the know the evolution that. of a joke, <laughs> the evolution of of someone becoming good at yeah. something, of someone comfortably and easily putting down their their fears and, and all the risk involved in that and just learning from it and making changes and trying again. Yeah. And the real the the problem most of us have, the 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 challenge of feeling confident and succeeding at whatever you're doing is those feelings you have right after it croaks in the yeah. middle of the room. Yeah. Where that, you know, then all of the messages you got when you were younger, all of the learnings you took in. All of the things you came to believe about yourself, primarily, you know, as a representation, kind of an archetype thing is, is you, if you fail, you're bad. No. And I think failure is a good thing. Well, if it's, if it's harnessed the right way, if you learn right. from it. But most, I think people want to, most people will entertain that intellectually. Yeah. They'll believe that, you know, they'll, they'll make sense out of that and go, okay, yeah, yeah, John, I'm with you. But in their heart, yeah, in their heart, the experience of failing 
isn't always like that. Yeah. And whenever the, your heart and your head come into conflict, yeah, your heart's going to win. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and I don't think anybody wants to fail. Right. But I think that when we do, and inevitably we are going to, mm-hmm. at some things, yes. sometimes, the only people who don't fail at anything are people who don't try anything. And the only people that don't fail are people that never get any better at what they do. Exactly. And, and I think if you do fail and learn from that failure and you go, okay, well, that was, that was, Mm -hmm. that didn't go well. Uh, what am I going to do differently next time? And I don't think you can start planning that soon enough. I mean, there's some people who, you know, they'll have something that just didn't go well. And they're like, well, I'll think about that, you know, three months from now when I'm going to do something different. I'm like, I think about it right away. Right. Because then I can start fixing the problem instantly. And being comfortable enough to do that. That is where confidence emerges from. It's also where freedom emerges from. That's what makes you okay in the world yeah is being able to it, it's summed up very easily and there is no failure there's only feedback there you go there is no like failure that. and that's one people will entertain that in their head and they'll be like oh yes dr bureau i dig that <laughs> but um but in in their hearts a whole nother ball game and so that's where the change in the learning has to happen but people change because of emotion and yeah. they justify it later with intellect. Does yeah. that make sense? To it you? absolutely does. You, you, your your emotional world, your feelings, your heart. That's what has to change. And what happens is is that's where people do change. But in their head later, they're like, oh well, I sorted this out, and I, I you know I know what to do now. And and they it be, it makes them feel smart and in control. But in reality, the only place human beings change, and the only place where confidence and and security and freedom and success are really born is in your heart. I love That's that. where it has to live. So if, it, you know, a nice recap then is uh, I gave you the formula for a successful you, life. You did. <laughs> for those of you who listened to Sunny ninety three point three, uh, John here just gave you the metaphor you need. I, don't, I to, didn't even know I did it. Yeah, you no. you were brilliant. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You were so, brilliant. So uh, I'll say if you want help, don't call me. Talk talk to Doctor Dan. <laughs> He pulls the best out of me, and uh, he'll pull the best out of you. Now, we've talked uh, on the program about helping people lose weight, which mm-hmm. right now he's doing for my beautiful bride and I, mm-hmm. and we're tr- tremendously Succeeding successful in like this. Succeeding like gangbusters, the and, two of and you. very happy with what you're doing. And, and I'm I'm proud to say that we're a client and a patient, and and working with you and. And anybody else is looking for assistance, but it's not just weight loss. That's what we wanted some help with. And it's helped so we don't have the cravings that mm-hmm. we had before. And we've done programs before and we lose weight and then we gain it back because we didn't really change anything long term. We did a diet for a specific amount of time. But you didn't learn exactly. what you needed to learn. And then when it was done, we went back to what we were doing. And guess what? Yeah. We went right back to where we were. Because big secret, if you're trying to lose weight, it's never about the food. No. and, and We uh, eat because of how we feel. And the thing that I really have taken from this is uh, it's a lot of it is in my head. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is what I'm thinking about, and a lot of it is how I'm feeling about things. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's been, for me, uh, Sioux Falls Hypnosis has been wonderful to help on our weight loss journey, and it's going very, very well. But I know you help people with... Uh, trying to quit smoking. You help people that are struggling with stress-related mm-hmm. issues. Uh, what we kind of talked about here is uh, confidence, you know, mm-hmm. that need confidence. People who want to succeed at something. They want yeah. to get, you know, they're, they're at work and maybe they, you know, they're, they want to take the next step. They want to take their career to the next level. I mean, one of the things I do is I work with a lot of clinicians, a lot of uh, therapists, yeah. uh, counselors, psychologists, uh, all over the United States. And, and you know, what they, they there's, they've figured out, they've come to the conclusion that, that they, they're, there's, there's something inside them that's interfering with their ability to really connect with that person, to really do this work well, to really help other people change. And most of the time, it's just us dealing with our fear. It's a, it's a confidence issue for yeah. most people. That's how they'd see it. And it is, and in, even amongst clinicians in the mental health world, it is realizing that you get to be okay, even if it doesn't go well. Yeah. Even if you don't, even if you don't get it right, whatever that means. Even if you're not, it doesn't work the way you hoped it would. You're still a good person. You're still in the right place. You still get to be okay. And that is what causes them to be able to let go and actually become what they want to become. Nice. It's the fear. It's in your head. Yeah. What you're telling yourself, the things you're telling yourself, but also the feelings that come with that that are holding you where you are. And so being able to have the learning experiences you need to have to see that differently, yeah. to change what's going on in your head and to feel differently when there's some risk involved. As you said when we were talking before, you see r- the risk yeah. of failure as, as an opportunity. I do. And again, 
I, and I wish everybody in the world did that. The world would be a well, different place. And I didn't always feel that way. Mm-hmm. But I, I remember, I, I used to read a ton of books. Mm-hmm. And I never read books that were like, you know, once upon a time. <laughs> All of the books that I read were, but there was one called Failing Forward. Yeah. And I met the the author. And, uh, and when I read that book, I remember thinking... What a simple thing, mm-hmm. really. At the end of the day, like I could have probably written that book because I've failed a lot. Well, I don't I've, have to be afraid. All I have to do is learn, yeah. change, and try again. And then I and I had when I failed, I had learned. It's like okay, don't touch that. It's hot. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how I learn. Good information to have. Doing yeah. so, so then I would avoid that. And mm-hmm. uh, and I remember a, a book called Confessions of an Sob by Al Newharth. Yeah, you know he yeah. before he. Uh, Help create the USA Today, he started a, a newspaper in Sioux Falls, South Dakota that failed. He had a, a, a paper here called Sodak Sports hmm. when he was in his 20s, and it failed. And he says in his book, if he hadn't failed in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, he would never have succeeded with USA Today because he learned what it felt like to fail, and he knew how to avoid those things. Mm-hmm. But he learned from that. And and again, failure, I don't think, is a bad thing. I think if you don't fail... You don't learn. Probably, and, and also, maybe you're not trying enough. That's the flip side of it. If, you, if you're not failing, you're, if you're not failing, you're not learning anything, and you're probably not putting yourself in the world in a way that's going to make you happy. Absolutely. And it's going to allow your life to be meaningful. And so it's absolutely imperative that we all get on board with this idea that you have to try and you will fail and you get to learn and change and be okay and have that be a a good experience and try again and get better. But people who are suffering in one form or another, that process has stopped. Yeah. You know, they are, they are somewhere feeling a lot of risk and a lot of fear and a lot of shame or guilt. And that is preventing them from from really being able to, to learn and make those changes and try again and feel good about that and Absolutely. become what they... Now, you are not you may not become exactly what you want to become, but you're going to get close yeah. and it'll certainly be a journey worth taking. Yeah. But you got to be able to take those steps. Absolutely. Be, be willing to fail because if you're willing to fail, you, you'll, you could fail forward. You could, you know, you could learn mm-hmm. from it and, and move forward and do good things. If somebody listening would like help, whether it is with boosting their confidence or mm-hmm. reducing their stress or helping to lose weight or to help quit smoking... If they would like some assistance uh, from Sioux Falls Hypnosis, how do they get a hold of you, Dr. You can, you can find us on the internet, SiouxFallsHypnosis.com. You can also reach us directly at 605-702-6691. Love to talk to you. Very nice. Again, Dr. Dan with Sioux Falls Hypnosis. And we had a chance to chat a little longer today. Uh, on Tuesdays, we do a quick little five-minute program. But every once in a while, we're going to do some of these where it's a little longer. It's a podcast form only. But it's a, a chance for us to say some of the things that – we have these great conversations after the radio program. Yeah. As soon as we're done with the five-minute segment, <laughs> like, then we're like, Woo. we should have said that. <laughs> so uh, that's what this is. Uh, so maybe not quite as structured. Maybe not, you know, I, I ramble on a little more than I should, I'm sure. I'll get you a cattle prod. Just zap me when you need to. Okay. But uh, the the, uh, the program, again, on Tuesdays is nice and short and concise. But this is an opportunity doing mm-hmm. this to say a little more. And again, if you would like information, I encourage you to reach out to Dr. Dan, SiouxFallsHypnosis.com.